You shouldn't walk into a man's office without knocking. Not in Africa. <laughs> Good to see you, Mark. Welcome back to Joburg. I've missed you. It's gonna be a great week. Well, I'm better than the Nigerians. I don't fool you, mate. Well, I just delivered two cargo containers filled with busted Kalishnikovs off of one of my ships. Jesus, Mark, we're not in the warranty business. Nigerians lowballed me. They get what they paid for, which reminds me. The shit going down in the Congo, and I've got two containers need to be moved from Russia. Can you help me? Uh, there's not gonna be any more shipments. Well, of course there is. I've paid those custom wankers. There won't be any mistakes like last time, I promise you. It's not them, I'm just not moving product for you anymore. You're not making any sense, Mark. Are you selling me out to another buyer, the highest bidder? Is that what 15 years of friendship has meant to you? No, I'm not shipping out to the highest bidder. I'm not shipping uh, for anyone anymore. I'm out. No, you're not. Look, we both knew this arrangement wasn't permanent. We had a good run, and now it's time to part ways. You don't part ways in this business, Mark. What do you think the customers are going to say when they don't get their guns that they pay for? They'll be angry. I think you'll be just fine. As governor, I like to know the names of the people that visit my state, especially when they are uh, involved in the murder of my son. So who are you? I know that you work for Victor Halley. What I don't know is where he is, so that's why you're hanging around. You should probably make this easy on yourself and just tell me where he is. Wait. Who are we talking about again? <laughs> Answer him. Brilliant. The dog speaks. Where is Victor Halle? I'm so, oh, the name doesn't ring a bell. Is he an ex-lover of yours? This is going to be much easier for you, if you're polite to the governor. I'm sorry. Is he an ex-lover, Mr. Governor? We know that he's here. We found his papers on a ship from Johannesburg. It's only a matter of time before we find him, with or without your help. The question is, how much pain are you willing to endure for him? My guess is quite a lot. Wilson disagrees. We have a little wager on it. He doesn't have faith in people like I do. And he is determined to prove me wrong. I'm going to ask you one last time. Where is Victor? I'm sorry, sir. I just don't think she's going to be very cooperative. That's okay. I'll leave you to... to it. Morning, sweetheart. Well, it looks as though you two got to know each other. Now that you're all freshened up, I've got a new question for you. Did you kill my son? No. Victor has muscle to do that kind of thing. I'm just his eyes and ears. So what is he doing in the States? He wants his money. He got his money. No, he didn't. He got his fucking money. I deposited the money in the goddamn account myself! He was supposed to release my boy! That was the deal, and now my boy's dead! Well, he never got the money either, which was also part of the deal. I gave him the money! <laughs> Did you kill my son? No, Governor. 
You killed your son ten years ago when you screwed Victor. money and he didn't get it. If you did deposit it, then what the hell happened to it? How do we know you didn't take it? Because Victor was the only one with access to it on our side. The question you really should be asking yourself is who had access to it on yours? Yeah, tell me about it. No, no, it's not you. She's not the easiest person to get close to. There's a wall there. Trust me. Are you talking to that squirrel? I was a junior chipmunk, uh, and I had to be versed in all the woodland creatures. Please continue. Ah, uh, he doesn't really want to talk to you. Well, then you ask him. <sighs> He'd been in the middle. Squeaky, uh, squeak, squeaker, squeaking. Jaguars, no kidding, brutal. Is everything okay? Uh, uh, yeah, sure thing, come on in. What? Who are you? I'm your grandma. Your face looks really weird, Granny. I've been sick, I... Your mouth doesn't move when you talk. Uh, plastic surgery. Grandma's had a little work. Uh, now, come on over here. Let's have a look at you. So, what's going on, Grandma? Oh, this lad doing a lot of quilting, so you got the loot. Whoa. What big hands you have. Oh, all the better to scratch my back with. And what big ears you have. All the better to hear your many criticisms. Old people just have big ears, dear. And Granny, what big eyes you have. Are we just gonna sit around here and talk about how big I'm getting? You came here for a reason, didn't you? So tell old Granny what you got in the basket. Ah, oh, Granny, what bad breath you have. All right. Ah! You again? What do I have to do, get a restraining order? Settle down, little girl, I'm on to you. <laughs> Save it, red foo. You've been dodging me all day, but now you might as well give up. <gasps> That very moment, Officers Romero and Kramitz were headed westbound on Biscayne Boulevard. Three months earlier, they had been involved in a scuffle with a crack dealer at the very intersection they were now passing through. Romero's shirt had been torn open in the altercation, revealing a red bustier from the Victoria's Secret's Desire Collection. Kramitz had never gotten it out of his mind. So I was thinking maybe you and me could get together sometime. Walter, do you want to have sex with me? Walter couldn't believe it. Had he somehow found the wormhole in the universe that guys have been seeking for eons? The wormhole that would allow him to bypass all the talking, 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 and just do it. Walter thought hard about how he would phrase his response to Monica's question. Yeah. Well, I don't want to have sex with you. You're a married man. Yeah, but not happily. Man with a gun! <laughs> Please, put the gun down right now! It's not my gun. Some guy- Put down the gun! I'm a very good student! Shut up, punk. Hey. Hey, oh good, you're home. Listen, I was talking to some oh, people- Whoa, 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 I just walked in the door. If we're gonna talk, I gotta get a can of listening juice. <laughs> Hey. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I was talking to the girls at work. Oh, here we go. What? No good ever comes from that. It's never... You know, I was talking to the girls at work, and they told me that I'm not servicing you enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the thing. 
A while ago, Jane and her husband decided that they would go find hey, Jane, that one who looks like Pete Rose. No, that's Bethany, and she, she does not look like Pete Rose. Well, let's just crack open the old baseball encyclopedia here. <laughs> All right, maybe a little. Look, here's the thing. Jane and her husband went to couples therapy, and they found it really helpful. She loved the therapist they use, and, and I, I think it's something we should do. Why? Our marriage practically runs itself, and plus, you're not chunky like Jane, so why do we need a therapist? Wow. Rough day for the work friends. I just think we're both so busy at work, we never have time to talk, and, and now we're going through all this fertility stuff. You know how I feel about therapy. Why deal with stuff when you can just push it down inside and go on with your life? <laughs> well... That's great, but as a backup plan, it might be nice to have an hour every week where we can connect and focus on our relationship. Here's the guy's card. I don't know. Do we really need to pay a guy to tell you how lucky you are? <laughs> well, no one's doing it for free. A control enthusiast guide to life. Uh, the remote control. Incredible invention. But how does the control enthusiast control the thing that provides so much control? Well, by any means necessary. Marshall Clear. That's right. With a low of 74. Dibs. More showers developing tomorrow and not as warm with a high of 77. With the winds out of the... I find that business success often starts with a good cup of coffee. So today I'll be giving you some real world advice on making the perfect cup of joe. First start with a good mug. I like my mug to feature something manly and impressive. Like my mug. Now comes the hard part. Getting coffee into it. I NEED A CUP OF COFFEE! Personally, I recommend an intern, but I know everyone takes their coffee differently. Brad! Take the room on three. Room on three, got it. One. Well, there they are! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> on three. As in one, two, three, go. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Must know we're coming. Look, I'll find another way. Can it? Well, you can't be serious. Yippee ki yay. Not firing, not firing. <laughs> Ace Mulligan. I thought I asked you to come alone. Look, Dick Wade, let's talk here. Not necessary. <laughs> Wait, now hold on here! Maybe we should call the bomb squad? Uh, I got it. It's always yellow. I got it. It's always red. It's almost always great.
Blue? Mm. Blue.